Happy Monday, everyone. This is Rob McDougall with Zank Financial with your weekly economic update. Today is December 5th, 2022, Monday. Last week's economic data. I'll preface it first by saying the really important economic data did not come as an economic disclosure, but I'll hit that after I go through the actual releases that we had during the week. So last week, Tuesday, we had the consumer confidence number, which was just okay. So the month before, it came in at 102.2. This is the U.S. government's edition of it, the conference board. 102.2 last month, it came in for November at 100.2 versus a consensus of 100. So pretty much in line with expectations, not a, not a market mover. On Thursday, we started getting more important information, the infl- inf- inflation numbers, personal consumption expenditure. This is the inflation index measurement that the Federal Reserve uses for policymaking more than any other. So this is the one they pay the most attention to. So the October number came out. The actual year-over-year increase came in at 6.0, which is a nice decrease from the month before. Uh, September was 63 for the month of October, it came in at 6.0. The expectation, though, is it was supposed to drop a little bit more up to 5.9%, but close. Uh, also, uh, the same day, the personal consumption expenditure core, that came in as expected, a uh, 5% increase year over year. Expectation was 4.9, 5.0. So again, both of those inflation measures going the right way, both in line with expectations. We had the November ISM Manufacturing Index, uh, which didn't come in that great. Now, I, this is one I talk about quite a bit. It is a manufacturing index. It's a survey and uh, comes out monthly. 50 is the demarcation line between expansion and contraction. Above 50, good. Below, bad. Came in below 50. Expectations were that it was going to come in at 49.8 it came in at 49.0. So in terms of the economy, um, that does suggest certainly a manufacturing slowdown. The next day, Friday, last week, we had the November non-farm payroll number. Uh, That came in stronger than expected. So the strength here has, I I just have to say, it is surprising uh, that we continue to add jobs in a kind of uncertain economic environment. So if you look at the the last four months, we've averaged about 275,000 jobs, and the November number came in well above expectations. Uh, Consensus was 200,000 jobs added in November, actual 263. So that would suggest the economy is doing fairly well, and again, it's surprisingly resilient despite the fact uh, we see layoffs and concerns uh, in through major corporations. Uh, Last one that came out on Friday, and this one impacts inflation, that was the average hourly earnings. That came in hotter than expected. It was expected to come in a 0.3% month over month increase. It came in at a 0.6. The real takeaway though here is despite that increase month over month, more than expected, if you take a look at year over year, the average hourly earnings increase has only been about 5.1%. And as we mentioned a little bit earlier, PCE, the Fed's preferred measure of inflation, that's running a little over 6%. So uh, wages have not kept uh, pace with inflation over the last years, many now. Inflation expectations actually rose just a little bit last week, still nothing uh, major. Yeah, the 10-year inflation, 10-year inflation break even, which we often cite 10-year treasury minus 10-year tips, rose a little bit last week to 2.43% from 2.32% the the week before. But again, 2.43% over the next 10 years looks like a very favorable outcome, I would say, for most investors. So the big deal last week was really uh, Jerome Powell addressing the Brookings Institute last Wednesday. And I have to say that having watched it, I walked away thinking there was really no change. It seemed very much in line with what we heard three weeks prior after the FOMC meeting for November, where the Federal Reserve increased the Fed funds rate 75 basis points. 
So I didn't think there was really any change, anything that was communicated that was different from three weeks prior, but boy, the market absolutely loved it. We had a huge rally last week, uh, midweek in equities and fixed income. We'll look at the numbers in just a moment. Before I do, though, I'll just mention that the, uh, the rate expectations now for December, so we have a Fed meeting starting next Tuesday. The announcement is the next day on Wednesday. The probability of a 75 basis point increase, that has been dropping, fell further after Jerome Powell's discussion last week. So now the expectation is less than 25% probability of 75 basis points, therefore almost 75% chance of a 50 basis point increase next Wednesday. So last part before I hit the numbers, uh, the returns for last week on the indexes is uh, the current thinking on GDP growth here in the fourth quarter of 2022. Whereas look at the Atlanta Federal Reserve's Fed Now pronouncement. They took that down last week. And I was, again, another thing I was very surprised by. The week before, they were predicting 4.3% growth in the fourth quarter, which I think I might have mentioned on the podcast, seemed high. They brought it down last Friday to 2.8%. That is a huge increase, but much more in line with consensus expectations of 2.3% GDP growth. And as I had likely argued before, if I didn't, I'll argue it now, a 4.3% GDP growth in the fourth quarter probably would be counterproductive. That would be probably one of those good news is bad news situations where investors would be much more focused on the lingering effects of inflation if GDP were to come in that strong for the fourth quarter. So markets last week, I mentioned the midweek rally that we had thanks to Jerome Powell that drove equities and fixed income up. For the week, the S&P 500 up 1.2%. We did have some reversal in the um, returns between value and growth last week. Uh, Value has dominated returns this week. Growth has been very poor. Last week, growth was up 2.8% here in the U.S. Value barely up as 0.4%. Year-to-date, though, that, of course, is a different picture. Year-to-date, value has outperformed growth by 34%. And small cap, much less so of a factor, but small cap versus large, small cap has outperformed year-to-date by almost 3%. So those two factors, very good for Zeng Financial Client Portfolios. Last thing, uh, fixed income last week rallied as well. We had the two-year yield drop 14 basis points. The 10-year treasury dropped 17 basis points. So the U.S. uh, aggregate bond index, one we quote most often, uh, was a positive 1.5% last week. So let's turn to this week's economic releases. We've got a few that are coming out. Uh, I'll just refer to the three that are coming out on Friday, probably the most impactful uh, to our inflation, the other consumer sentiment. So the PPI, the producer price index for November, that and PPI core will be out uh, both for November. That'll be out on Friday, December 9th. The expectation is they're both going to be up 0.2% quarter over quarter. PPI last month was up uh, was up 0.2%, so that would be no change. Last month, though, PPI core was flat. Again, the expectation for November is a positive 0.2% month over month. Last indicator is the University of Michigan Consumer Sentiment on Friday will be out. That's the D- December reading. The prior reading was 56.8. The expectation consensus is 57.0. So that is it for the data this week. Thank you very much for attending. We'll look forward to seeing you next week. Thank you. 